What are you most looking forward to about being a mother? Oh goodness, I'm so excited to be a mom. I I can't wait. I you know, it wasn't necessarily something we were expecting or planning. Um, but as soon as I saw a positive, I was just like so thankful and so excited to get to be a mom, um, especially now just knowing it's a girl, you know, even if, if it would have been a boy or a girl, but knowing just kind of a sense of who they are, having their name, like it just makes me so giddy to meet them. But I think I'm most excited just to get to parent with Christian and get to just love another um child that's an extension of who we are um, I'm excited to you know get to pray with them and learn with them you know the bible talks about having childlike faith and my mom always talks about how like things whenever I was little that I would say that would just make her go like whoa that's really cool like that that's something I haven't even thought of and so I can't wait to just like hear the things that come out of their mouth that just kind of keep me in awe and wonder but I'm excited for it all Oh my goodness, your face just lights up when you talk about it. It's amazing. So it's so cute. Um, is there anything that you're nervous about? Like, it seems like mostly excitement at this point. Yeah, I'm definitely really excited. If you ask me if I'm nervous and you know, I guess it's, it's not that I, I don't think that there's reason to be nervous. I think that there are plenty of reasons to be nervous, but you know, my siblings have kids and um, a lot of my friends have kids. So I've just kind of been around it. I've seen it. And of course there's a huge adjustment and there's a lot of hard things, but I'm not really nervous about it. I'm more um, excited about it. I think I think the only thing I'm nervous about is the lack of sleep because <laughs> I like to sleep. So we will see. Um, I pray my baby likes to sleep too. <laughs> Let's hope that they like to sleep. That way Please you can get Lord. your... <laughs> you yeah. touched on this a second ago and you said that you're having a girl, which is so exciting. What did you and your husband Christian think when you first found out you were having a girl? We were so excited when we found out we were having a girl because... Well, honestly, I just totally thought we were having a boy. And I don't know why, because there's no rhyme or reason why you would think one or the other. But I just kind of thought I was. I just thought I was going to be a boy. And so whenever um, at our gender reveal party, they sprayed like pink paint on us. When the pink came out, I was so shocked. I literally said to Christian on the way over there, I was like, I hope I'm like genuinely surprised. I just feel like I just know it's going to be a boy. So when I see the blue paint, I'm just going to be like, yay because I would be excited but I don't know I'll be shocked but so that just shows you I was super shocked and Christian was like so excited he actually told me that the whole time he thought it was a girl he never said what he thought it was because he was like I'll be so happy with either but he said secretly he thought it was a girl so he was pumped and he's gonna be the best girl dad he's he's such a he's such a boy he's such a bro but he he's got a soft heart that is so cute. And you said that you think he's going to be an amazing girl dad. Is there anything in specific that you're like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to see him do this with your daughter? Yes, I cannot wait for, to see Christian with our daughter, um, mainly because he is so sweet to me. And I feel like I just can't imagine how sweet he's going to be to our daughter. Like, I feel like she's going to be like the most confident and we pray humble person ever because her daddy is going to make sure she knows she is beautiful and wonderful and lovely because Christian's just very uh, affirming and complimentary. So I just feel like this little girl is going to be solid and set in who she is. I love that. That is amazing. Everyone needs a Christian in their life. Hi. Everyone does need a Christian in their life. <laughs> so you two recently recreated a pregnancy photo from your mom and dad, which was so cute. Where did the idea come from that? And what did your parents think about it? Yes, yeah, so my parents made this picture whenever they were like, um, I guess 17 or 18 weeks pregnant. And so since then, all of my siblings that have been pregnant have done the same picture uh, at 18, 17 weeks. And so I did mine at 17 weeks because we happened to be at the beach at the time and to recreate this picture, but mom loved it. I'm pretty sure she's framing them all for our house because she just loves it. But it really was funny because Christian managed to get the belly uh, even bigger than my dad's in the picture. And I was like, because I was like worried because Christian's pretty fit. And I was like, I'm going to be the only one with the belly in this picture. But Christian got there. And so we had a pretty good recreation of what happened years ago. That is so funny. Your mom definitely needs to get all those hung. That's her Christmas present, if not. 
Exactly. <laughs> um, so you talk about all the excitement of pregnancy, but you obviously had a bit of a scare while being pregnant. And can you tell us a little bit, obviously, first of all, we're so happy you're feeling better, but tell us what symptoms you were having and, you know, describe that moment where you realized you had COVID, you should go to the yes. hospital, you're pregnant. Yes. So I got COVID whenever I was pregnant and it was really, really scary. I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah, I, I'm so excited about pregnancy. I talk about the joy of it and the beautiful aspects of it. And this was so beautiful because I was pregnant. And I think this was probably the first moment that I really felt like a motherly instinct come over me of like, I'm sick, but like I have a baby in me, I have to make sure the baby is okay. And so um, even just being worried for not myself, but for her was a really cool transition in my own life to just start that motherhood earlier than it, even when she comes. But um, yeah, it was really scary. I, my sister got COVID and then, um, and her fiance now, who was her boyfriend at the time got COVID and then my parents got it and then um, I got it. And so, ended there thank god um but yeah i got super sick i got pretty much all the symptoms that you have with covid the cough the headache the chills a fever weakness everything you know um and then i actually got kind of the stomach bug with it which was the problem because i had already been throwing up for like a long time because I threw up for about eight weeks straight being pregnant and so I was already throwing up and had the stomach bug and so I got super dehydrated which is what actually led me to having to go to the hospital because at that point I was just super weak and had to make sure the baby was getting food and getting water because I couldn't hold anything down so went to the hospital and um, got fluids got some medicine and um, two days later got more fluids and then finally started the recovery process um, but I'm so grateful it was it was so cool because in the midst of all that and I was it was really hard and it was really scary like I got to see the baby because they were checking on her and it was really cool because her heartbeat was just so strong and she was doing so good she was like literally moving all around like dancing in the womb which was just uh, really a exciting thing in the midst of a really really hard moment um, so it was cool to see that she was healthy, even though I was, I was not doing so well, um, uh, which kind of helped me through it. So that was our first hard thing to go through together, which is pretty, pretty cool. One day I'll tell her she was in the year 2020 when we had COVID together and we made it through it. That is seriously so scary. I mean, just for anyone to have it is one thing, but to have it while pregnant is obviously a completely yeah. different thing. Are you feeling better now? I do feel better now. It took me a long time to recover. I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, I think whenever you're sick, especially when you're young, you just want to get better fast. You just want to push through. And COVID is not something you can just do that with. It kind of lingers for a while. And I definitely got really weak um, with it. And so, yeah, it took me, well, 12 days. I was, I was really sick for 12 days. And then it took uh, about two weeks from there. It's probably about a month in total to just fully recover where it was still kind of in my lungs so much as um so i've been trying to slowly but surely get exercise back in my life and christian's been kind of helping train me and man it, it has been it's been pretty it's been pretty funny because i got so weak it's crazy how just a month like that can just knock you out um so my heart goes out to everybody who has suffered from covid struggled with covid had a family member who's um passed away from COVID because it really is, it really is no joke. Okay. If you can work out while beating COVID and pregnant, then I think that gives motivation to me and everyone else. <laughs> oh my gosh. It is not easy. It's not easy. My push-ups are like, like this, literally. You know what? That is amazing that I, I aspire to be that one day. <laughs> What have you learned? You talked about Christian and do you do feel like it's maybe made you two closer going through that experience together. Like what have you learned about him and how supportive he's been this whole time? Christian and I have definitely gotten a lot closer uh, this whole year, honestly. I mean, when you get pregnant, I, like seriously, it's just it's just vulnerable, okay? Because you have to like puke all the time. You're not feeling good. You are just getting bigger by the second. And he has been the most supportive uh, friend to me. You know, we were reflecting back on this year and he's just been, whenever we had our one year anniversary and talking about things that we've seen in each other and 
he's really just been a good friend. He's been so solid and been there. Like he's held my hair every morning whenever I'm thrown up, which as a trooper, I tell you, um, and that that'll bond you with anyone. And so it's been great. The COVID thing did teach us a lot though, because I think he was dealing with his own kind of fear um in the midst of that and so it kind of taught us how to be there for one another when we're both scared um and when something's really hard and so yeah we've we've bonded more this year than we ever thought we would when we got married a year ago so i can truly say i love him a lot more a year into marriage than i did when i we got married because little did we know we were about to go through so many things together Oh my goodness. The rest must be easy from here, right? Like it can only go up. <laughs> crazy, crazy. I know. Insane. And is your family feeling better? You talked about some of your family members having COVID too. My family's all recovered from COVID. Yes. Um, everybody's feeling great. Bella, my little sister did lose her smell for a solid like three months, but I think it's finally back. Um, yeah, it's the weirdest sickness ever for sure. That's so crazy to have a loss of smell for three months. Like, oh yeah, real. Um, the holidays are coming up. Obviously, they're looking a little bit different for everyone this year. But do you have any plans? Yeah, so the holidays are coming up, and this year is going to look different, of course, for everybody, and it's going to look different for us, too. Uh, this is our first year to spend Christmas with Christian's family, which I'm really excited. Um, it's part of marriage. You got to share. You got to share your time, share your holidays. Um, so this is my first year there, which would be so different because my family is huge. We have six kids. Three of us are married. One's engaged. We have grandbabies. The house is just full and it's wild and crazy. And then his family is his parents. And then he has his brother and they are the sweetest people in the world. I love them so much, but it's a lot different uh, just even with the number of people. But I'm so pumped. I think it's going to be a blast. Um, he has an amazing, incredible family. So we're going to go there first, spend it for Christmas, and then come do a little holiday things with my family too. Oh, that's so nice. You talked about your little sister getting engaged, which is so exciting. What did you think when you heard the news? Were you surprised? You know, it's funny. I knew that my sister is getting engaged, but I was still surprised when she got engaged. I even knew the day it was going to happen, but I was still shocked. I think it's just because she's my little sister. Like she's five years younger than me and she's always been so much smarter and wiser beyond her years, but she's still my little sister. So when I saw her with a ring on her finger, I was just shook, even though I totally knew it was happening. Um, but I'm so excited for them. They're so happy and they're a great couple. Did, did you help him plan at all? Like, did you approve of the cute barn setup? How did that all go down? So Jacob is, he's a romantic. He's, he's really good at that kind of stuff. So he, he, you know, picked up the ring. He knew what he wanted. And actually his sister is Bella's very best friend, their roommates and everything. So she was kind of behind the scenes on helping with what Bella would really want, uh, which, which is so fun. You know, she's one of my friends too. She actually, we just started a worship band called Ella Worship. She's the lead singer in that. She's also Bella's future sister-in-law. So Louisiana, we are, we, we, we run deep, you know, we run deep. And did you guys all celebrate together that night after the proposal? We did celebrate after the proposal. It was so sweet. So Bella got engaged at a barn um, with Jacob and then they came over to my parents' house and we were all there and Bella was so surprised and just shocked. I mean, she was so happy. And then having been through the wedding planning yourself, are you helping her? Or are you like been there, done that? I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I am definitely going to help her through the wedding planning process because it is such a process. But I did tell her because she asked me about being, you know, her maid of honor. And I said, I'm honored. I would love that. I said, but if you have this wedding around the time I'm giving birth, you better not pick a tight dress or, or <laughs> I'm dipping. You got to give me some options, some flowiness. Because uh, she was really, she really wants to do it close to when we're having the baby. And I was like, I'm all in. I'm so for you. Just do not pick silk. <laughs> That is so funny. Let's let's talk full circle here. Like when you look back on Duck Dynasty, did you know then that being on that reality show would change your life? Like how how did it change your life? Yeah, I never knew when Duck Dynasty started that it would change my life this much. Definitely not. Um, because, you know, I was 
in eighth grade when Duck Dynasty started and um well I guess freshman year of high school whenever the show kind of launched and went out eighth grade when we started filming um and yeah it was just my family's thing like we were just doing it together as a family we had no idea what was to come from that and then of course the show populated so much but how would I have ever known that then I would go on Dancing with the Stars and then that would happen and then I would go on to speak and you know write books I mean I never ever would have guessed that and so when people say you know what what do you hope the next five years looks like I'm like I I can't even say that because five years ago if you would have asked me what the next five years will look like I would have not come close to what God was going to do and so um which actually the Bible talks about that his ways are higher than our ways his thoughts are higher than our thoughts we, we couldn't even possibly comprehend some of the things that he's going to do um, and so, yeah, I, I'm shocked. I'm genuinely shocked at where life has taken me. I'm so grateful. I'm grateful that in the midst of life changing so much, um, I don't feel like who I am changed. And I'm grateful for that and that I have a solid support system, family, um, husband now, future child to just stay rooted in that. Because um, I think sometimes whenever your life changes so much, you feel the need to change. And um, I think that's something that's kind of kept a steadiness throughout this whole thing that I never felt the need for myself personally to change, even though life around me got crazy and changed a lot. Well, you can tell talking to you that you are obviously exactly who you were when it started. And I think that is so amazing. Is there mm-hmm. anything that you regret or that you would do differently? Or are you kind of happy with the way it all played out? You know, I think it's easy to look back and see the things that you probably wish you did differently or that you regret. Um, and there are certainly things that I that I would have probably done differently had a second go at it. But at the same time, the things that I did that I would have done differently have definitely taught me a lot and made me who I am. And I think expedited um, even just maturity in my life that I wouldn't have gained had I not gone through some of the things that I went through. You know, I think um, maybe I wouldn't make my relationship so public. (laughs) Maybe that was something that I would have done differently. Now that I'm married, I'm like, well, that's weird that people still uh, see pictures of me and my ex-boyfriends on Google, but that that's just a silly thing. But truly, um, yeah, everything that I went through and everything that happened that I might say I regret definitely taught me a lot and made me who I am. Uh, even the things like when I was on Dancing with Stars, I was so fearful and those things, you know, I could look back and say, I wish it wasn't so fearful, but it was in that time that helped me bust through those feelings of fear by like conquering it, doing something scary. And so, yeah, I think life definitely is a journey for everyone. And it's easy to look back and say, I regret this. But, you know, if you didn't go through that, you might not be who you are today or have the strength that you have. And so I am grateful for the different things that I went through that, you know, might not have been perfect. And then last few questions. So being in the spotlight, you know, obviously there's a lot that comes with that, but you've also been super open about some of the things you've struggled with, with, which I think is so helpful for your fans. One of the things you talk about is your eating disorder. And how, how do you feel like talking about that for your fans and being so open about that has really, you know, helped them? Yeah. Um, Years ago, whenever I kind of started to be famous, if you will, um, you know, I I really struggled with just the idea of fame and just people knowing who I was, people knowing what I looked like, people kind of having this uh, judgment in a sense on what my life was going to be or how I was going to live it. Um, And I remember being so fearful because I felt like to be in that position, you kind of had to present yourself in a very perfect way like everybody on Instagram was very polished and perfect and you know had it just all going on and I just didn't feel like that was me all the time (laughs) like some days are hard some things happen that aren't that aren't great or I don't do everything right and I didn't want to be a hypocrite and have people look up to me in a way that that wasn't who I was you know I didn't want people to look up to me and say oh your your body is so great whenever I actually am struggling with what I look like internally and struggling with an eating disorder or whatever it is and so I kind of made a vow to myself I remember I was in prayer one time I was like God how do I handle this how do I handle this fame 
this need to feel like I need to be perfect or present myself in a certain way. And I just remember just hearing so clearly that what I was going to do is I wasn't going to try to be perfect or present myself in that way, but I was just going to be a good sister and a friend to people. And in my mind, like being a sister and a friend is like the most honest, vulnerable uh, person that you could be with someone. And so you share the struggles, you share the hard things, you tell somebody, you warn them before they, you know, go down a bad path. And so I was like, if I'm going to go through something that I know other people are going through I'm going to share it and I'm going to be open about that and it's not going to make me look good but it's going to you know I think help people see that God's really big in my life and hopefully it can be in theirs too um, and so one of the things was an eating disorder another thing I talk about a lot is anxiety because I know thousands millions of girls struggle with both of those things and I didn't want people to look at me and say oh well she's never going to struggle with that because she looks like this or she's never going to struggle with that because her life is like this I wanted people to understand you can look like anybody or you could have the best life ever and you can still struggle with those things if you don't have contentment in um and who you are hope in something greater that's what I found in Christ um, and so that's why I share my faith with people. That's why I share the struggles with people because I genuinely want to help people. And I would hate to have all this following and do nothing with it. Um, I definitely feel like if you're going to have a following and if you're going to be an influencer, then we should be good leaders. And so being a good leader, in my opinion, is being honest and uh, helping people out when they're hurting. Thank you for sharing that. I'm sure it's you know something that's obviously not easy to talk about, but I think obviously you're helping so many people by being open about it. If you don't mind, and if you're not comfortable answering, that's totally fine. But do you remember kind of at your work, like, do you remember at the lowest point, like how skinny were you? Like, what, what were you feeling in that moment? Like when the eating disorder was going on before you decided to be open about it? Yeah. You know, the crazy thing is, I think eating disorders come off to people in um, so many different ways. Like you could have a severe eating disorder where, you know, you have to throw up every time you eat. You could have one where you genuinely do not eat. You could have one where you are literally so skinny that you need medical help like that. Those are very real things that some of you may be struggling with. And if you do, I encourage you to get help. For me, it wasn't like that. It wasn't as obvious. Um, I didn't even really realized that I was struggling with that. Um, but I did later. Um, basically, I, I kind of woke up one day, looked at myself and was like, what, what am I doing? Um, because I was just counting calories and I was eating and then like every time I'd eat, I would need to like go feel the need to work it all off because if I eat this and I need to run this or if I eat that, I need to work it out. If I, um, you know, I would, I would talk about eating a lot, but I wouldn't actually eat it just to kind of mask, you know, what, where I was at. Um, but the crazy thing is as skinny as I was and as skinny as I was getting, um, I would look in the mirror and I would think that I was fat. I would think I need to work this off or I need to work this off, or this is where the problem is or whatever. And I'll look back now, which I'm like 20 pounds more than I was at the time. And I, feel so healthy and I feel so strong and I look at myself and I don't think that I, you know, am unhealthy or look unhealthy. Um, and so I think the thing is, is it was a distortion of the mind. It was, I was telling myself the story that I'm overweight, that I'm not healthy, that I need to work out more, that I need to eat better or not, or not eat as much. And you know, that, that is a disorder. That is, that is wrong. That is, that is not, you know, a natural way to think about yourself. Um, and certainly not a healthy way to think about yourself because the more you get on that pattern, the skinnier you get, the more actually unhealthy you get. So it's just a complete lie you're telling yourself in your mind. So I remember one day I said something about my body, um, that was very negative. And I remember my mom was like, what did you say? She's like, say, do you actually think that? Do you actually believe that? She was like, you had like a distortion. And I was like, what? And I went and I just looked in the mirror. And I just remember I just started crying. And at the time I was pretty uh, solid. I wasn't much of a crier. Um, I just started crying because I kind of just realized um, that I had just been lying to myself and the pattern that I had been on. And I just remember I got, I got on my knees and I started praying and I was like, God, like, I know that your word says that I'm beautifully and I'm wonderfully created. And that was not dependent on a number on the scale. 
And um, you may be beautiful and wonderful, not because of just what I look like, but because of who I am. And I need to stop focusing so much on the outward and focus on the inward. And I'm telling you, like, when I broke free of that and I started just eating to fuel my body, I started thanking God. I remember thanking God I had to. I said, God, I thank you for these arms that they can carry things. I say, I thank you for the stomach that one day it will carry a baby, which is cool now. I thank you for these legs that they can walk and just started thanking him for the actual purpose of each part of my body instead of looking at my body as an object or a trophy. And it changed uh, so much about me. And I'm, I will say I'm thankful that I went through that then before I got married because I do think that you have to learn to love yourself before you can allow anyone else to love you because somebody could have told me I was beautiful every day and I wouldn't have believed them because of what I was telling myself. And so before you let somebody else come into your life and love you or speak life over you, I encourage you to get to that place for yourself and don't expect that from somebody else. I found that with God. Um, and I think anybody can find that with God through his truth. Um, but for you, you're gonna have to go through that journey of breaking free of those lies and covering them with truth before you um, let somebody else into your life. Because I think so many times we think, okay, well, whenever I get a boyfriend or whenever I get married or whenever I get this, then I won't feel so like this. But that's just not true. That's just continuing down that pattern of a lie. Sometimes you just have to cover that for yourself. Talk to us about World Vision and then tell us why you decided to partner with them. Yes, yeah, so I have been partners of World Vision for a few years now. They've sponsored a couple of my tours that I've been on, and I honestly just, I love the work that they do. Um, a few, about, I guess a year and a half ago, I went to one of their meetings and the president just kind of shared their heart behind uh, why they do what they do. And it was just so beautiful because, you know, there's a lot of organizations out there, but to be able to have have one that you truly trust that's this big organization but it still feels personal is like so huge to me and so I love the work that they do they do so many different things which I think is really cool because sometimes you know you think it's just sponsoring a child or it's just this and and those things are amazing but they kind of have this like all-encompassing just good work for the world feel and so I love that and I also love that this world vision, I mean, it's called world vision for a reason because they have this global perspective on the needs that people need from wherever they are. And so I just love it. I love how you can do a simple thing to help in a really big way. And so I've loved being a part of world vision. And then what is the holiday gift you teamed up with them to design? So I teamed up with World Vision to design the Circle of Hope ring. This is the ring. I'm actually wearing uh, two of them because I like it stacked. Um, but yeah, it's uh, just literally a circle of hope because you could give $50 to World Vision and they send you the ring for free. So you make a donation, you give, a, you get a gift or you can just give a gift. So they have a gift catalog where you can go in and you can make any donation or you can literally give somebody a goat or a give them, you know, a different type of animal that they need, a chicken, whatever it is, and you can give them something that they specifically need for their village or for their community, or you can simply donate and then you get a circle of hope ring or something um, along those lines. And so I think it's a really cool trade-off, you know, you get to do something simple um, that actually has a big effect on somebody else. And in return, you get a little happy, which is awesome. I love that. That is so pretty. And of course, the message behind it is even better. Um, how are they helping families in need this holiday season? So World Vision helps families in need in a lot of different ways. So like I said, you could give like a specific gift to a family and that helps tremendously. Or you can give like a family kit and you could help like a family of five or more, like just by your donations. And so if you get the catalog or if you go to worldvision.org, you can see literally so many different ways that you're able to help because there are specific things to help in the holiday seasons and to help even just amidst the COVID and coronavirus just with the um, effects that it's had on the whole world. And so um, that's what I like about them. They're able to adjust whenever things get hard. They're not just gonna keep going with the model they've always had. They're gonna say, okay, what's actually the need here and how can we help that? And so I encourage you if you wanna give or if you want to specifically help a family during the holiday season, 
go to worldvision.org, uh, specifically on Giving Tuesday, they're matching every gift that's given uh, up to a million dollars in uh, donations. And so I think that's really cool. So yeah, they're helping in a ton of different ways, especially in the holiday season.